Well, first of all, I might as well get things out of the way here with, in regards to recent uh, recent uh, comments and etc. Et you know, every every uh, every week I, I sort of get a gold card. I sit down and make a gold card every week. And on that gold card, I try to prioritize what's important in my life. So when I look at it, and I go boom, 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 right down the list. The first thing I'm going to say about this, I'm not going to make any more comments about the situation. I made my comments, and I'm going to let God take care of my battles. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to take care of my family. Number three, I'm going to take care of this football program and represent it with class. Number four, I'm going to worry about Purdue, or the X and O's, and the personnel involved in that. And that's it. So I'll take no other questions about that, and we'll get on with Purdue. Otherwise, this will be the shortest conference, and you guys all drove up here for nothing. So. I'll take questions. On Purdue. Coach, I guess we'll start off with um, Brian Lewerke, his performance, his physical condition, how much that plays into his status this week, and how much more you need to see from Rocky Lombardi in order for him to be game ready. Yeah, you know, uh, first of all, Rocky gets all the reps. He got all the reps last week as well as Theo Day. Um, you know, Brian's got to be able to practice, and that's obviously noticeable from last year, last week's performance. But as I said after the game, there's a lot of things that go into this. There's separation by the wide receivers. You're down some wide receivers. You've got to get separation certain routes. There's conceptual things that we've got to deal with. Um, you know, played against a good defense. There's pressure that moves him out of the pocket or creates pressure for him. So there's a lot of different things going into this. And uh, I think he can be a very effective quarterback, but he's, I do think he's got to practice. So I know he feels better than he did last week, so hopefully that'll happen. He did practice, but he wasn't able to throw um, down the field. And uh, I thought he had velocity in the game. I didn't think that was the problem in the game. So, Mark, you've told us numerous times you're a defensive coach and you really rely on your offensive guys. So why doesn't Rocky have your confidence when, Mark, when uh, Dave Warner wanted to make the change? Well, first of all, that, uh, my decision was to get let the work go one more series. But that series, you know, and then there was a long um, drive against our defense. We sort of took the clock. So, you know, that was that was a situation. Otherwise, he'd have been in there with probably about seven minutes to go. Uh, he needs to get rid of the ball quicker. When he's had an opportunity to play, he's taken too many sacks. I um, think he can be a good quarterback, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the situation. Get rid of the football. Mark, in that regard, the work situation kind of took on a different dynamic because it was an arch rival, as you said, you wanted to play. Could that change this week? Not that this isn't important, but that because it's not... You know, no, you know, I think all games basically look at it and say, hey, all games, ultimately there's rivalry games, there's important games on our schedule um, that you're going to deem more important from a, from a fan standpoint and from our internal you know, well-being, I guess, at a safe standpoint. But at the end of the day, they all do count one. And so uh, we're going to win our football games as we move forward, and we're going to play our best players and give us an opportunity for that. And um, again, I go back to the work. He's played a lot of football here last year. We've been very successful. And I think he's got a live arm, and I have a lot of confidence in him. Not that I don't have confidence in the other guys, but we're going to play the guys that we think are, playing, are the best players at, at, at a particular point in time. If that changes, then we'll make decisions on that. Justin Lane stand to the chance to play more offense. Is that in the works, or do you know? Uh, he'll play on defense primarily, primarily, but um, uh, he will play some offensive football as well. Coach uh, Purdue is coming off of a huge win against Ohio State last weekend. What did you see from them, and how do you prepare for that? Yeah, I think first of all, Purdue, uh, you know, started out 0-3, losing three games very, very late in the game. And then now they've gone on a four-game win streak, playing very, very well right now offensively. Um, been very impressed with their quarterback. He, he dishes the ball to the correct play to people, spreads it around. Um, you know, number four, Rondell Moore is an outstanding receiver, freshman, do-it-all kind of guy. Jet sweeps, catching the ball, punt return, kickoff return. Uh, Coach Brown done a great job there since, um, since getting there really last year and sort of turning the program. He's going to run trick plays. He's going to, you know, run fake punts for them last year. Uh, so those type of things. I think on the defensive side of the ball, uh, you know, they're 4-3 defense. And uh, they're playing extremely hard, playing very well on third and short, which gives you an indication of where they're at. Um, sort of a combined effort there, a lot of good players. 
and uh, then their tailback is running effectively as well, Knox. So uh, very good football team right now, playing hot. So we're going to have our challenges cut out for us there. Uh, back to Justin Lane a little bit. How tough is that to do that? I mean, some guys have done it here. I know Tony did it a few years ago. But the other thing, if you can think back a couple of years when he played his first game as a receiver, I know he flipped over kind of out of necessity, and Coach Samuel always said he hates when you yeah. come around and see his receiver start backpedaling and you take him. Yeah. Um, but was that was it always kind of a thought that you wanted him over there? Was that that year more just kind of needed? No, you know, we, we brought him in as a wide receiver. He was a wide recruited wide receiver who played defensive back as well. And uh, so he had the benefit of being a uh, wide receiver for the entire month of August and, and really through the first month of, of September, I think, as I remember back. And then we sort of flipped him and played him a little bit both ways. And then gradually when we got into it, you know, he became a defensive back. Uh, but he has the background and the foundation to be able to go over there and play. And I think at this point in time, until we get our guys back, all of our guys back, which with the exception of Felton, we should get them all back. Um, you know, I think he needs to play there some, but at the same time, he, we can't take him away from the defensive side of the ball. So they're no huddle offense. Um, just depends on how, how long their drives are and what's going on. And uh, you know, we can insert him in there. We will, but I think he'll, he has the background to do some specific things and help us. On the flip side of that, the injury situation at cornerback. Do you have any updates on Josiah, whether or not he'll be back? Same with Josh Butler, and then. Yeah. I guess also breaking down what Trey and Shakur, that, that little back and forth between the two of them trying to get to that other spot. Yeah, uh, first of all, Josh is very close to being able to play, see how he does this week. And uh, I know he wanted to play this past weekend, he wanted to get in the game uh, on the sideline. Josiah is, will start practicing with the, with the team this week. And uh, well, he's, he's gone past scale and things of that nature. And then uh, remember, he has to sit one, one half, so um, he's close to being a four-game redshirt thing, so we'll see how that goes. He'll probably dress this week and have an opportunity to play this week um, if we deem that, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, but it depends on how he practices here Tuesday and Wednesday, but I think that, you know, he's he's close to being good. And then about those other two? The sure. two guys uh, just felt like, uh, you know, after the big play, Trey offered up two hands, got swiped on it, and um, gave up a big play. Was Shakur in for a couple plays, played pretty well, so we just stayed with him in the fourth quarter. So we'll see how the practices go this week. But I think both of them uh, have the ability to play out there. They're quick and they get great ball skills. And, you know, that's unfortunate what happened with Trey, but, you know, that's a technique issue. Mark, it being four and three now, it's not necessarily maybe the season you thought you were going to have. When you look at some of these injuries, will you consider more medical red shirts or taking some and, and delaying maybe some expectations for next year? You know, our goal right now is to, is to finish and, um, you know, finish October and, and see what November brings. Uh, so my take on things is, like I keep saying, you know, we win every football game, we can win every football game. So the goal of this program is will be always to win, and that will be the priority. Uh, so we'll, we'll focus on that, and uh, as we get guys injured back, we'll see how that all shakes out and where they're at in the, in the scheme of things. But. I think the one thing you got to recognize when you get guys back, are they fully healthy or are they playing hurt? And so you want to have them play, you want to play the best players. And um, so, you, you know, you're trying to do those things, even at the quarterback position. I thought he had velocity, so we went with it. And um, so we'll continue to make those decisions. Mark, over here, a couple of questions. One on LJ Scott. I'm wondering how his return as he gets back in the full condition to <clears throat> change his things. And, and with so many injuries, do you use him even in a greater capacity than he might have in, in week one? Use him at a... Use him more in the past different, 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 different ways, yeah. Well, first of all, he hasn't played football in six weeks, so it's been a while. So, you know, he, he did get in there, and uh, I thought he played pretty well, made some different, made some cuts on a couple of the occasions where they were, you know, tight holes. And uh, he's got to get back to playing the way he's capable of playing and, and who he is. Um, because he's, he's a very good player for us. So that takes time. You know, you can't practice like you play. Games are, you know, you don't have the, the advantage of having an August camp and three scrimmages and things like that to get yourself ready. You're sort of trying to get ready on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then you're, you're held out. And I think your, uh, uh, your ability to, to sustain physically takes a hit a little bit. So you've got to get back into shape. So I think he's, he'll be doing that. And 
I think we'll see progress. The other question about what the four game redshirt rule, does that change your approach with a guy like Theo Day? Do you evaluate him differently as in the mix if you were to need another guy other than Brian? And where are those two between he and, and Rocky in that competition? Well, I think Rocky has a bigger foundation, but I think Theo Day is very talented. And if it came to it, we played him in four games. I don't think we played him in five or six. I guess uh, five. But uh, we played him in four games. I don't, as I said before, we're going to play to win. Uh, but uh, I think we have a, a pretty good feel of who knows what right now and um, who can do what right now. We just have to allow it to take shape. Mark, uh, through, you mentioned Purdue 0-3, uh, I believe, in the start and then, then four in a row. Um, what changed for their team, whether it's a subtle team differences or sweeping changes? Just what did, what did you notice uh, were some of the differences from the early part of the season to the last few weeks? I think that um, if you listen to Coach Brown, they've gone on the attack a little bit more and spread things out. I think they have a dynamic guy and number four who's made plays for them. And he stayed healthy. I think the majority of their receiver situation, running backs have stayed healthy. <clears throat> and they've, you know, the, the quarterback's done a great job. You know, and they inserted him. I don't, you know, they're going back and forth with two quarterbacks, and then they finally figured out that this was the guy they were going to go for, go with, and he's done an outstanding job. Very few interceptions, I think two for him, maybe 17 touchdown passes, maybe, or something like that. Uh, so he's been very productive. Um, so, you know, we've got to work out, cut out for us on the defense side of the ball. There's no question. Mark, when you have a team like crew that's obviously playing so much better than they were at the start of the year, do you focus more of your study on the, like, the last four games as opposed to the start of the season with just the results being much different for them? I think we have the opportunity and the time to look at all of it um, to some degree and certainly focus on, on the last four, the last five games, uh, especially when they've decided on the quarterback. But you've got to take into account some of the things that happened early in the year as well. So we try and look at everything. Uh, relative to the situations involved, whether it be red zone, goal line, third down, all the different situations, personnel movements. Mark, you know, in the past, after big games, win or lose, you guys have usually played pretty well. Obviously, coming up, I guess I'm asking more about mindset now. Does it does it help at all that Purdue is coming in playing the way they are? They have these guys focus, or would you anticipate that focus would still be there from these guys, regardless of, of who the opponent might be this week? I think our focus needs to be on ourselves and, and how we're going to play, our attention to detail and our, our uh, execution and uh, things that we can come with conceptually, both sides of the ball. Purdue's got a great football team, we've got to play to them. In other words, we have to format our plan to what they do. That's always the case every single week and, um, and that's what we'll do. You know, but uh, you know, I always have pointed towards what do we do after? What do we do after any big game, any big moment, win or lose? and um, try to point towards that because I think that's a reflection of, of the next step for us. And uh, so that's what we'll do. Kind of a follow-up to that. Two tough home losses sandwiched around a great road win. What is the heartbeat of your team right now? Or is that still to be determined? Well, it was tough on, on Sunday, as I've said before. You know, when you have a, when you have a tough situation, you've got to get up out of bed, and you, you know, but believe me, there's been a lot of different people around the, around the conference have to experience that, whether it's this year, last year, whenever. Uh, so, um, you know, that's part of sport, that's part of competition, that's part of athletics. you got to learn to do that. That's part of the process, that's part of growth. And, uh, you know, I think our football team has done a good job with that. Um, I don't think there's been a, a, a game where we've come and said, oh, we're not prepared mentally or, or uh, we're not prepared emotionally. We've come to play emotionally. And what we've got to do is execute. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna play with effort and toughness. Mark, would you talk to a, to us about the Purdue defense? What do you notice about them? And even before Brian's injury, your offense has struggled, and I know you said the quest this year was for more points. What do you see from their defense? You know, again, I think they're playing very well, especially uh, on short yardage situations. From their defense, play a lot of cover one, man coverage, and quarters coverage. Those zone pressure like a lot of different people running the front side back or off the edge and that type of thing. That seems to be the thing in, you know, uh, that everybody's doing right now to try and throw people off on the RPOs and things of that nature. Um, number 41, I believe, uh, Bailey, Marcus Bailey, uh, is a guy that makes a lot of plays for him here in Ohio. Um, you know, pretty, pretty stout up front. 
secondary. I like the corners. So uh, be, be a challenge. Coach, the evolution development of your offensive line, you said repeatedly how long it takes to develop line, and you've got three sophomores and Richard freshmen that have been pressed into duty, you've got injuries along that front as well. How do you evaluate their development at this point? Where is there left to go for this season, and how much do you have to kind of count on their development over the next offseason? Well, a couple of those guys have been starting for, for quite a while. You know, whether even if they're sophomores, they've played in the past. I think Blake Buter's a guy that's the one guy that hasn't played as much. If you look at Jarvis, if you look at Jordan Reed, they played last year. They've got experience. If you look at Cole Chewin, she's got experience. If you look at Tyler Higby, who's got experience. And um, Luke Campbell, he's got a great deal of experience as well. So, you know, we've got guys with experience in there. They should be able to function and play well together. Uh, they need to do that. You know, that, and you've got to win up front. If I sat there and said, hey, the, the tailback from Michigan ran the ball for 33 times, and we ran it for, for 14, you know, I can tell you who's going to win the football game, you know. So that, uh, you've got to be productive running the football because otherwise it becomes, you know, second and ten or whatever it is. But that's all a part of it. So we've got to find a way to do that and keep pressing it. And there are tight ends and other position groups that are involved with that. And then from a running back position, you know, when you hit the second level, you got to be able to run through some tackles. It's just a fact. That's part of it too. So let's not all say it's one thing, it's a combination of things. Problems always are a combination of things. Mark, no fumble recovers for just five games. You get one at Penn State, two last week, I think. Is there anything you notice different in just, you know, getting the ball out the, the last couple of games of more focus on it or whatever the case may be? I'm oh, sorry, the first part. You didn't have any fumble recoveries the first no, five games recovery. of the season, yeah. one against Penn State, two Well, last we week. keep talking about it. Keep talking about it. Sometimes they're going to come in bunches, much like a lot of things. <clears throat> Close to getting a couple more out in the game, but it didn't happen. But um, we keep talking about it, and I'm sure offenses keep talking about ball security these days because turnovers have such a huge part uh, to do with winning a football game. And so uh, we'll continue to keep working it every day in practice and keep stressing it. Mark, you, you mentioned uh, the tight end group and, and some of the problems. I guess where, where is that group right now in terms of? Providing some extra production without the receivers in there, and I noticed that you, you played Trent Gillison out of Penn State. Is he a guy that could be a, a, an answer there to get some more production late in the season? Uh, we want to ha handle him with the four-game type deal, so you know we've got five left. So I think you'll anticipate him playing, you know, four or five. But don't want to play the guy four plays. Want to play him significantly if we play him. He uh, can be a very good player. He's young though. Know. Uh, so there's the learning process there. As, as far as the tight ends, same thing. They'd be more productive in the pass game. Some of that's their issue, some of that's other issues. Uh, and then they've got to be more effective in blocking. You know, have got to win up front. I mean, there's no, there's no substitute for saying that. I mean, that's just the way it is. I don't care where you're at in the game of football. You, you've got to win in protection or you've got to win in, in blocking, you know, to run the football effectively. So you've got to be able to do that. And, uh, we're going to continue working on that. It's not a lack of effort. I don't think it's a lack of toughness. Um, sometimes you just got to get the job done. Mark, I was just wondering, we uh, obviously Pelham goes down, and so that causes some shuffling at the receivers. We see different people in different spots on the uh, depth chart. In this offense, how difficult or easy is that for the guys to know multiple different positions? And is that something that um, you know maybe only a two, three, four-year guy can do to be able to master multiple? Ones where younger guys are maybe pigeonholed uh, to a degree, or yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit of that. But our, our for, you know, the way our, our concepts work and everything, our formation groupings, we can put people based on calls to to in various places. Uh, and then there are a couple guys who can play all three positions, which helps. We have time for a couple more. Coach in the back, um, athletes who have torn their Achilles say it is the hardest injury come back from if at all and for someone like Felton Davis so young have you spoken to him and kind of gotten a sense of where his mind is at after the injury yeah I obviously talked to Felton and I mean I think his mind's in good shape he's going to have surgery I think this Friday from one of the leading surgeons in the country uh, you know, down in North Carolina and so he'll, he'll bounce back he's young uh, well maybe maybe people say that there are a lot of people who have come back from those uh, injuries, especially nowadays. I think back in the day they used to be career ending, but I think nowadays other people have those and, and are able to, to respond. So 
positive. But Felton's a positive guy, and uh, he'll work towards it, and uh, he'll be okay. I think he's got a very bright future. That's it. Um, Mark, quickly over here. With the four-game redshirt thing with the potential of a bowl game, how does that factor into things? Do you wait to the last three, or do you think, you know, we'll just deal with the bowl game and, and hold a lot of these guys and maybe play in November out of that game? Well, I plan to win, so that will format that in. You know, I don't plan to lose, so uh, when we get to those points in time, we'll, we'll, we'll make those decisions. That's good. Thank you.